We believe that governments who have erected barriers to Internet freedom, whether they're technical filters or censorship regimes or attacks on those who exercise their rights to expression and assembly online, will eventually find themselves boxed in. They will face a dictator's dilemma and will have to choose between letting the walls fall or paying the price to keep them standing. The operators of the San Francisco subway system are facing intense criticism following their decision last week to temporarily cut off underground cell phone and mobile internet service at four stations in an attempt to foil a protest. On Thursday night, authorities with the Bay Area Rapid Transit, or BART, removed power to underground cell phone towers at four stations. The decision was made in an effort to disrupt a protest against the recent death of Charles Hill, a homeless man who was shot dead on a train platform in July by a BART police officer. Police say Hill threw a knife at an officer. According to media reports, BART may be the first U.S. government agency to shutter mobile internet and phone service in a bid to quash a demonstration. Free speech advocates across the country have condemned the move. Some have compared it to the decision by former Egyptian leader Hosni Mubarak to shut down Internet access across Egypt in January in an attempt to stifle the growing protest movement. On Twitter, critics of Bart's action took to using the hashtag MubartEk. On Monday, the Federal, Communications Communica uh, the Federal Communications Commission announced it will investigate Bart's decision. FCC spokesperson Neil Grace said, quote, we're continuing to collect information about Bart's actions and we'll be taking steps to hear from stakeholders about the important issues those actions raised, including protecting public safety and ensuring the availability of communications networks. On Monday, Bart officials were forced to close four stations during the evening rush hour as free speech advocates attempted to disrupt the evening commute. Today at George Washington University, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton delivered a speech about Internet freedoms worldwide. Secretary Clinton said that we must enable people to express themselves freely around the world. And the Internet is one way in which people are able to express their rights and their freedom. To nations that censor the web, Hillary Clinton warns that the U.S. is funding groups to help people access the Internet safely and efficiently around the world. Egypt shut down the internet and mobile phone for days. People used social media sites such as Facebook, YouTube, blogs, and Twitter to organize rallies and convey their feelings around the world. Twitter and Facebook helped fasten the pace of the revolutions by informing one another of the events on the ground. Just with the click of a mouse, protest organizers communicated about the presence of police and the latest demonstrations in the country. Clinton said that the Obama administration plans to promote Internet freedom in countries whose repressive governments have censored the web. Web censorship means a hold back to political expression. I would condemn human rights abuses and the repression against uh, by governments of their people wherever they happen. And the unrest in Britain is being aided by technology with flash mobs being organized through popular websites. It's a growing phenomenon that has its pros and its cons, as CBS News correspondent Randall Pinkston reports. As the riots in England set parts of the country burning, authorities say social media is fanning the flames. It began after Mark Dugan was shot and killed by police. A memorial Facebook page quickly went up, and 15 minutes later, there was this post. Please upload any pictures or videos you may have from tonight in Tottenham. Share it with people to send the message out as to why this is blown into a riot. It was a call to arms that has now erupted for four days. Rioters and looters taking to the streets. Instant messages typed on blackberries began to fly, in effect, organizing the chaos. Everyone from all sides of London meet up at the heart of London. Oxford Circus, one read. Their shops are going to get smashed up, so come get some free stuff. It's a dark side to social media, which was praised last spring for its role in fueling the popular uprising in Egypt and across the Middle East. Generically speaking, the Arab Spring and the London Summer are identical. You have disenfranchised youth uh, using tools uh, of the trade, things they carry in their pocket, and spontaneously erupting into one thing or another. More than 1,200 people have now been arrested across the country. 
We are making technology work for us by capturing the images of the perpetrators on CCTV so even if they haven't been yet arrested, their faces are known and they will not escape the law. And as I said yesterday, no phony human rights concerns about publishing these photographs will get in the way of bringing these criminals to justice. Anyone charged with violent disorder and other serious offences should expect to be remanded in custody, not let back on the streets. And anyone convicted should expect to go to jail. Mr Speaker, everyone watching these horrific actions will be, stuck, will be struck by how they were organised via social media. Free flow of information can be used for good, but it can also be used for ill. So we are working with the police, the intelligence services and industry to look at whether it would be right to stop people communicating via these websites and services when we know they are plotting. The disorder came off what they were inciting, but still uh, they were inciting significant violence uh, via the social networking site Facebook. This being uh, an avenue that uh, we were told um, in the uh, height, uh, during the height of uh, the disturbances that uh, the authorities were very concerned that social networking sites were being used uh, to try to stoke up uh, trouble and this clear, clearly demonstrates that uh, this was indeed happening. So Jordan Blackshaw, age 21, Perry Sutcliffe Keenan, age 22, now both jailed uh, for four years and this uh, is the most severe sentence that's been handed down. We believe that governments who have erected barriers to internet freedom, whether they're technical filters or censorship regimes or attacks on those who exercise their rights to expression and assembly online, will eventually find themselves boxed in. They will face a dictator's dilemma and will have to choose between letting the walls fall or paying the price to keep them standing.